One, two, three. Oh, that's mean. nice. That's Clean. nice. Were you rushing or were you dragging? <laughs> 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 okay. So, welcome back. This is nominally episode two, but you're going to see this on episode one because that's we right. forgot to do an intro. So, here's our intro. You're going to hear a whole spiel of from the basement to the basement. I think nobody's piped up. Well, so we spieled going. we spieled last time on what we're, you know, this podcast is about. We just forgot our names. Yes, so. yes. true. So our names. Hi, I'm Hassan. I'm Will. Hi. I'm Patrick. Um, we work in the basement, and therefore this this is called from the basement. Cool. All right. Thank All you. Right, intro done. Okay. Welcome to the pilot episode, episode zero, episode one, who fucking knows of From the Basement or Basement Friends Forever. <laughs> Don't look disappointed at me. I have nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what's this podcast going to be about? Well, well, there's three of us. Um, we all happen to be physics PhD students, uh, and I'm very fond of these two, so I'm dragging them. To, to have this podcast with me as you can see shit's incredibly scuffed we're in a room filled with probably 30 to 45 chairs uh we each have a different kind of mic and we're all holding them so there's that highest the, quality ever the chairs are for the guests chairs are for the guests uh i don't want to do the audio for like 40 people i'm not gonna lie <laughs> what do we talk about here sure. what do we talk about here so, um, what we're going to talk about here is this is primarily going to be kind of a good times podcast. That does not mean that there's not going to be bad times or topics that we'll discuss that aren't necessarily super happy. Uh, I, I have, I forced these two to get three topics that they care about that we'll be talking about. I myself have three topics. Uh, I have one that's silly, one that's kind of funny, and that's just me being me. And then one that is a topic that I think is, I need your two inputs on. Because uh, it will determine how my wallet feels in the near future. Light. <laughs> <laughs> you have a plan for which one you want to start off with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Patrick and I, we've we've started the uh, the five a.m. train. You know, I actually, I, that's actually perfect because I wanted to ask you guys about that. So yeah, that's one topic overlap. We're starting off super good. <laughs> this is very good. Minus ten minutes. Well, <laughs> good, good, good. Let's re edit. But um, so we we have we started this five a.m. train. We're we're in the hustle grind set era of our lives. You know, we're we're young men. We 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 care about one thing only, and that's making money. No, um, we're we're actually going to the gym, and. uh so this, this requires me to get up at 5. I have a dog. So this requires a lot of work. Um, so I, I am on a very strict schedule. And today, to make sure... Today is actually a rest day. Um, but instead, we decide, I decide I'll, I'll get up at 5 anyways. So I'm used to the schedule. So I get up at 5. Uh, and I take Zelda out to the, the UCLA grounds here. Zelda is my dog. Um, and what ended up happening is I saw a woman run. And she looked like the spitting image of one of our undergrads. And I wave high, and there's no response. So I was like, oh, dang. You know, they didn't notice me. Uh, so that they run past again on like a parallel road, and I wave. And this person has seen Zelda no before. Way. Ain't no way. <laughs> so I wave, and there's no response. And I'm like, damn, that really sucks. Um, I end up doubling down uh, one, one more time. You and, went uh, for the third wave? I went for the third wave. The Just chase them down at that wave. point. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I, went, I went for the third wave. <laughs> <laughs> and, then the, and then I noticed that this is not a person that I know at all. Good. <laughs> and she looked at me like I was a sociopath, which is fair. Oh. Yeah, uh, and that's then, on you. And then she runs past and gets kind of close and just yells, "Good morning, hello." That poor, I'd that say poor at woman. the at the end, it's a positive interaction. Right? You you may have made a friend. No, she just had some random weirdo wave at her three separate <laughs> times. I don't think that's a friend. I don't think. I don't think so either. <laughs> actually, I think I'm on on his side of the story. Okay, here. cool. So you're on a list. <laughs> 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 So yeah, yeah. Um, five a.m. Waking up at five a.m. It's been good. 
Uh, I get really, really fucking tired at 8 p.m. now. Yeah. It's like a problem. Yeah. Huge. Oh, My absolutely. body just Love runs that. out of energy. Have you, have you guys felt like you've gotten stronger since you've started? Uh, I think I got stronger. I'm not a sore. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think always, like, um, I think a lot of people generally get deterred for, like, when they first start out, your body's not used to, like, the tearing and rebuilding process. So you're going to feel sore, but you know, with, with time, it should, it should feel better. But like, I feel like it's really hard when it comes to like these longer term, um, like body goals you want to hit. And so I, I don't know if you're all are like testing yourself, like either like outside the gym or in the gym where you actually have like, Oh, like I'm doing X pounds today instead of like Y pounds or something. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if y'all have like seen that. Cause like y'all have been doing this 5am stuff starting like when? Uh, I, I guess. Weeks ago? Yeah, I guess regularly, like two weeks ago. Oh, also, yeah. Come over a bit more. I just want to make sure you're here. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. I mean, I I would say I feel like I've gotten a little stronger. Um, you know, just over the last couple weeks. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we did like push day on Monday, and it felt better than the previous push day. Um, yeah. So th- there's certainly improvement, and I like, you know, I would like to set like reasonable goals for, you know, on the the monthish kind of time scale of. Just, How does like, it feel like? Like for your psyche, you know, for my psyche, your relative psyche. Like, do you feel like better throughout the, or is it I, like mostly just tired? Yeah, I mean, like I, I think like the minute I actually walk into the gym, when like I get there, right, that minute I'm like I've done it. Yeah, yeah. I've I've achieved today. Yes. I'm pretty happy with where I am. Right, yeah, start the day off with a dub. It, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. the time from when like I get up out of bed. Yeah, the, and then I before I, I, I get I can to the show gym, you exactly that's what it's like waking up because uh, my phone goes off and I go <gasps> and I remember and then I lose track of where I am for a few seconds and I uh, and then I look over at my dog who's looking at me angry because I have woken her up from her sleep <laughs> and uh, I then take her out to pee and then I wait for a we have we have a system <laughs> actually we have a really good story. Because that system actually proves to work really, really well. Um, we have to send each other a gift the second we get up. Uh, and that's how we know the other person is awake. And we have a group chat with a person who isn't here. Um, and uh, one day, this was the first day that he's joining us. <laughs> um, I wake up and then I send my gift out. And then I fall- actually, I didn't send a gift out. I just fall asleep. I turn off my alarm and I fall right to bed. And, uh, As one and, does. and then I wake up at exactly 5.45, which is the time we're supposed to meet at the gym. And we're just going to call him M here. And then M sends a message. He's like, where are you guys? And I respond with, oh, I fucked up. I, I, I overslept. Shit, my bad. Sorry. And then I scroll through the chat and I notice Patrick hasn't sent a gift yet. So I'm assuming <laughs> Patrick also has overslept. But Michael's at the gym. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> well, M is at the gym. Um, and uh, what ended up happening is that, uh, yeah, my suspicion was correct, and Patrick did miss it. I, I was in the dreamland. <laughs> when yes. did you wake up? I-, I woke up at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock on the dot. And the first thing I do, I w- open my eyes. There's sun in my room. That's kind of weird for five, right? Weird. I look over at my phone. Oh boy, there's a whole lot of Discord messages. A lot of Discord messages. Yeah, there's a whole lot of Discord. Oh, you guys messages. do this through Discord? Yeah, we do yeah. this through Discord. Oh, yeah. Boy, okay. So the first yeah. thing you get is the horror of Discord in the morning. That's right. It's, yes. it's it's the Apple alarm sound followed by looking at the tragic app that is Discord. That's right. Yeah. So so waking up and getting out of bed is is certainly the the hard part. Yeah, I mean, I applaud you guys. I couldn't do five a.m. I mean, like. Like the like, I like how you did the reenactment of what happens at five. <laughs> if I have an alarm that starts at five and then goes off every five minutes until seven, um, I'm just gonna be stone cold dead until like <laughs> maybe six forty five. <laughs> yeah, I'm just you know, I think I like my body. I subconsciously know this happens, and I can feel like the alarm going off and like trying to pull me out of my like. It's a very out of body experience. But I am very much like still in the bed yeah. experience as well. Yeah, I, I, I think it makes it even more out of body for me is when I open my eyes and I see uh, a 45 pound Australian Shepherd look at me dead in the eyes and like, why the fuck am I awake right now? Why was there an alarm 
that has pulled me from my slumber. Yeah, I mean, she's really the one you have to answer to. Yeah, right? I do. It's not us. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she dictates my schedule at this point, so. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> oh, boy. So what about you? What's going on? Not much, really. I, I, had a, I had a quick question for you guys. I've been thinking about this for, for a couple of days. Um, you know, we're all in, into physics, right? Um, Fortunately. So I kind of had, I had two questions for you. What was the thing that kind of got you interested in, in science in general? Mm -hmm. And then after that, I have another, another follow-up question for you. Okay. Do you want to take it away? Uh, sure. So what got me interested in science? Um, let's see. Specifically, like physics or just science? Just science in general. Just science yeah. in general. Well, I mean, I, I grew up with two doctors as parents. So I was kind of just surrounded, do it. surrounded by that in some sense. Um, but I, I, I actually was doing, I, I thought I kind of wanted to do physics in some level from a very young age uh, because I liked playing with uh, watch lenses, like those watches that actually have a lens sitting on top to like, amp like make the, the face look bigger. Yeah, yeah. So I used to play with those a lot. And then I wanted to be a lens maker or like a watch maker in some oh, sense. Cool. And, and now I'm in, in quantum optics. So I work yeah, with I lenses pretty, all day. Yeah, uh, yeah. Kind of honed in on that one at yeah, a young pretty age. Fitting, pretty fitting. Um, but for a hot second there, I actually thought I was going to do other things because my siblings both went to like the biophysics type. Not biophysics, uh, bioengineering type zone. For sure. Yeah. Um, so I thought I was going to do some of that stuff. Turns out I'm not, not super interested in that. I just kind of like, like the raw physics. So that's how I ended up being in physics. But what got me into science was I just, I grew up with it, really. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. Uh, yeah, so I guess, like, my current reason, and I would say, like, the, the reason that I would, like, go right off the bat, if you had, a, like, a gun to my head would be, basically, I feel like I did have to choose between, like, the different sciences, but at the end of the day, I always go with physics as uh, my favorite because I feel like it's the most... Uh, flexible it is the sort of uh like modeling that applies to like no i mean just also just the scales the raw scale of like what we're operating in mm -hmm. you know we have like you know everything down to a really small scale which is like the work <coughs> we do right sure. but also like of all the way up to like cosmological or like you know the classical all of these things explained in like one field entirely i feel like um it's just like really big bragging rights we get to have but like you know even if you try to go off of this argument I if if I had to like well actually myself right now, you know, uh, I guess like the the real power of that really comes from the math the mathematical modeling right. For sure. They describe systems that like mm -hmm. are so abstract they don't even have to exist yet, or, uh, you know, fully have them modeled. But if I had to start with like why science specifically, um, I feel like I'm getting I'm I'm getting into the vibes where it's kind of like um, Spider Man in the sense of like. There's been so many Spider Men that like um they don't even have to explain the Uncle Ben like history anymore. So like I feel mm -hmm. like I kinda have that right now as like uh <laughs> a an Asian guy who grew up here and like talking about parents who wanted him to be a doctor. Um Yeah. So mm -hmm. I like naturally had a lot of like, oh well like you wanna do this. I'm like, Oh yes, I very much wanna do this. Um pushed onto me, but I think it's one of those things where it's sort of like uh not self-fulfilling prophecy, but it sort of convinced me to like want to be in this direction in general. So I would say that's the the main shove into the field, and then like my raw, just like I can't with bio, I can't. And I so see, I was yeah. just like fooling around in the subfield. I know exactly what you're talking. And then about. I, I like I found that you know the exact thing I just described about physics uh, just a second ago. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm here. I see. Cool. So for me, it was like um, you you you, know. you met like you know Einstein and, and Newton is. You just fucking yeah i just, just met them old. yeah i just I, I went ahead <laughs> yeah yeah i was you know i was there when the apple fell yeah yeah you know when when they were like yeah we can actually use like you know mercury's <laughs> transit to measure you know like you probably had so many stuff, arguments yeah. with him about like That's quantum right. mechanics yeah. and everything exactly yeah, were you yeah. the guy who like coined god doesn't play with dice because you're really yeah. religious right y yes yes exactly yeah i'm a I, i'm an evangelical and uh yes which, which one are you in uh oppenheimer <laughs> uh, uh whichever one is the oldest guy that's me ah yeah. oh, okay okay yeah, yeah. cool yeah, that, that one was like near the tail end of my life that's right 
Um, but uh, but for me, it was like it mostly just like pop science kind of thing mm-hmm. that kind of got me into it. Um, Neil deGrasse. It, well, yeah, essentially, yeah, Oof. um, yeah, yeah. But you know, like I think that there is like a a good aspect of that, right? Is like you know, it gets it kind of like communicates these ideas a little more like broadly, right? Instead of having it be like kind of just like you know from your parents or from you know kind of like environmental factors there's like a little bit of a broader net um but you know like as we've kind of progressed through our degree and stuff like my kind of like view of like pop science things um i kind of like come at it a lot more with questions right and like there's a lot of videos that just i know i'm not the target audience for anymore um but you know i i kind of like have a lot of like reservations with some some pop science things like you know they make a video about this this kind of topic and i'm like well like you know that's not strictly true or something well, like actually. that and, yeah um and that kind of brings me to my follow-up question is like were you guys ever into pop science in any way i think Return. everything is back to normal sorry for that technical difficulties technical difficulties technical what te- difficulties what technical difficulty it's getting we're cut good. out completely yeah, uh, you're, uh, right. episode you, one is already a so fucking wrong. nightmare. <laughs> um. Anyways, anyways, anyways. You were telling us the story of how you met Isaac Newton, and then that's later right, on yeah, taught Einstein there. everything he needed to that's, know. That's right. Yes. Um, yes. I, I and was pop science. Say, yeah. Yes. The pop science part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you asked yes. us what pop science we'd listen, what we'd watch. Yeah, yeah. To. If if you guys were ever into anything that's pop science related, like you know, Carl Sagan stuff, Neil Neil deGrasse Tyson thing, or anything like that and if so when did you kind of like start having that little bit of um well actually um kind of realization oh like the well actually is when i would start getting involved in that kind of, like or getting yeah involved. So... When, when you stopped looking at it with like as the kind of reverence yeah. and and like kind of more from like a you know like oh how could how could this have been presented better or differently yeah um i think my very first real introduction to these things was so i i I did not grow up in the united states so i had access to like i still had access to the uh, discovery channel and history channel and stuff like that um history channel well back when it was good for you know those few years because we're old (laughs) um yes we (laughs) (laughs) um but I I I watched that one universe show, The Cosmos, I think it was called. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where Michio Kaku would come up and like oh, he yeah, would talk yeah. about string theory. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 dude. Going back in the in the annals of history. The yeah. annals of yeah, history. Yeah. yeah, we had like Michio Kaku and this other guy. I forget his name now. Uh, but anyway, the Grant Tyson, the whole the whole guys. So they they got me interested a little bit. I am not a space guy, as you know. It was always very cool, but I never really cared much for the planets. I just cared for like the physics that was going on on those planets, more or less. Um, but it still got me interested. Uh, I kept watching. Usually YouTube is the thing that got me really going. Um, I like 3 Blue 1 Brown quite a bit. Oh, that yeah. was the math oh, guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and Veritasium when he was still good. Now it's rough. Sorry, I'm already coming after you, Veritasium. <laughs> um, and um, a couple of other things. Really, the part where I got the well actuallys was was unironically when when like History Channel and Discovery Channel started going off the rails. Mm-hmm. Like I distinctly remember there was like a whole <laughs> there was like a whole a whole show about like life potentially on Titan, like the the moon of of Jupiter, mm-hmm. and yeah. there was there was mermaids. They had like they had like this CGI yeah. mermaids and shit. Yeah, and um, <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, but but. I guess I guess a more to the point, um, realistic like well, actually, was uh, when when everybody started quoting uh, that one uh, that one video about the double slit experiment, the one that everybody watched. It's like this really shitty CGI one uh, with like a with like a like a weird scientist. If you've seen it, you should you should check it out. It's really funny. Uh, and all of my friends who knew I did physics, who knew I did quantum, would Google double slit experiment or like whatever, and, and it would appear, and then they would talk about it. The video is not wrong. It's just 
I don't even know how to explain it. It's, it's a very, it's, it's like there's no background to what they're talking about. So mm. very quickly, people will talk to me about the they, they don't particle go, wave duality. Yeah, they don't like go under, go into the underlying assumptions of the experiment and yes. things like that. But yeah, yes, I yes. See. And, and yeah, go ahead. Well, I, f- I feel like that to me is a core part of pop science, unfortunately, because like you want to <coughs> yeah. be like very attention grabby with like That's the things right. you're saying. Yeah. So like saying like wave particle duality, it's like, ooh. And also, like, you know, double slit experiment. I feel like any sort of quantum sort of thing just breaks down into, like, cat, or Schrodinger's cat type of type of beat. Yes, and that's then, right, like, yeah. People are just sort of scratching their heads because, like, you know, it's like a kind of uh, weird allusion to, like, or, yeah, to, to what's going on, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, like, I don't know if I had any sort of well-actually moments, but I think I just started getting turned off by more and more, like, uh, <laughs> pop science folks like michu kaku yeah oh my gosh like i yeah. you know i don't claim to know what the hell string theory is even you know about but like it's not what he's saying uh, <laughs> sure yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like let's see yeah. and then neil degrassi tyson i feel like it was like like before i knew what do you like knew anything about the substance of what he's talking about right um i was like oh it's like so cool that like this guy has like a degree and he's like so in touch with the public and talking to people mm-hmm. but i feel like you know uh as like more and more things came out about him and also just like his actual just person like just about like oh you know i'm the i'm the science communicator and i'm the one who has the degree so like that's right you know, yes. yeah I, everything i say is just correct yes, yeah. he's so fucking annoying on twitter yeah, it's, too so that's it's real bad he's that's, so that's fucking what, annoying like why are you talking yeah. about santa claus and shit dude shut the fuck up yeah let the kids have their thing that's kind of what got me too is like i kind of like for some reason it, it was especially with him it seemed like kind of like this like grandiose like person kind of thing and like the more i learned the kind of the persona became more like evident to me right mm-hmm. and that's kind of what what brought me to like you know kind of re- reconsider kind of like seeing like pop science figures as kind of like you know like the end all be all and, and, and it's more like, like just oh, man, pop like, science you know. right it's just also yeah. science science figures like i know we're sitting at a university we're sitting in the physics department but Feynman was a piece of shit like like Feynman was a super misogynist and like he he like he wrote multiple times about like how much he hates women basically and like we're all people still rave about him and i don't know D- don't don't meet your heroes well yeah i mean I feel like all, <laughs> almost all the big physicists are yeah like, absolute assholes too i mean schrodinger i just put like put up like yeah, yeah uh you can go into the history on that one if you want sure, sure yeah, um for but sure. like i guess like what i mean to also convey is like I-, I feel like pop science at the end of the day though is like a really super like it's it's like trying to i feel like the ideal version of that would be amazing like i think um Mm -hmm. regular science science like as you were saying i feel i feel like it fails so badly at like just the global outreach right Mm because like the idea of like okay well now i'm going to synthesize all of my work into like you know this past x years into like five pages well, That's there's right. a lot of like insane language you're using there. So mm-hmm. let me synthesize that again into one abstract. Okay, but yeah. then you hand that over to someone who's like Keep not in the field. Yeah. Um, like, you know, you could hand it to like other academics, and then oh, they'll for just sure. be like, "What the hell are you talking about?" Yeah, generally? yeah. Just kind of like the the deep the deepness of the special the specialty, right? Yeah. It just keeps yeah. going. Yeah. So like, keeps going, you know, right? I feel like the people, you know, sort of. I think you know, just because you haven't. Sp- spend your entire life like working on this as like you know we're doing <laughs> mm-hmm. right yeah. doesn't mean you shouldn't be uh you should be excluded out of like knowing what we're about yeah. and also like I, I'm, I'm sure on the other end of the spectrum of people who are like already kind of like ooh science spooky and like why do we like you know throw billions of dollars at like any of this for sure is like you know i think that would help quell some of those sort of questions as well yeah know? absolutely yeah I, th- I think i think it's very valuable to be able to like try to convey what you do to, to anybody right um I, I think it's valuable for to like help everybody understand like yourself included right um yeah you know, so i think i i'm I, i'm just reminded of my of, of one of the people i go to the dog park with because he, he's sick um uh he he would come with like i think he's the best example of what you're talking about like he is the ideal uh where where he will he'll watch these pop science things and then he'll take the time if he's interested in something to to troll through the wikipedia article or whatever he finds interesting Brave. 
Right. And, yeah, yeah, very. And then he'll come to the dog park and he'll like genuinely ask me questions. He'll have like, like 59 tabs open on his phone. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he's like, uh, but like he's really cute because he'll run up. He's like, I have something to ask you, son. Or, like I have something to talk to you about. That's perfect. That's and then awesome. he'll like, yeah, and then he'll ask me these questions and he'll genuinely like listen to what I have to say. And he's like, That's beyond me or at some spots. And he's like, But he doesn't care. He just wants to learn a bit more. Yeah. Um, which which is very cool. And again, like I, I'm I'm pretty sure all your science friends appreciate when you when you bring up topics that they study and things. It's great. Oh, yeah. Um, we're just talking about a specific like brand of of pop scientists who are genuinely kind of annoying. Yeah. Because I feel like they make it more about them than they actually do about the physics right. or whatever or whatever field they're talking about. I think, but like at the core, though, like I I agree. I just think like it's a very sort of like um honorable goal. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. For sure. Um, like I think Neil deGrasse. I, I honestly I, I've just been thinking of all the Neil deGrasse Tyson shit that I know. Yeah. Like, he I, also I know. went here. He did go here. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or okay, I need to I need to get get my history double checked. But one of the current astro faculty uh, had Neil as one of his students here before. I know that he oh, almost failed that? out of his PhD, oh, like is that on true? thesis or something. Yeah, oh, I, I might be I very wrong, any. and I'm just spreading lies. But I, fuck it, I don't, I don't care know any of that history. Yeah, I I think it's good that I don't know the faculty name because I probably shouldn't be naming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably good. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't be naming people. I, anyway, just name drop. Yeah. Uh, I feel like my 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 name of what like dropping M is fine because like he streams and shit. It's fine. Anyway, okay. I'll cut it. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's see. But yeah, I was just curious about your guys' experience with that. Um, I appreciate you. What's your what's your reaction to like to like woo physics and woo science? Like how how do you how do you respond to it? I need to know. Like uh, Wait, yeah, I mean, mean it's it, it's hard woo? because like what what the knee jerk reaction is is to go like well actually and well, just be like yeah. the most annoying person that's ever like existed, like for example right? you know both of us are connected because our our electrons are connected via the quantum realm. Oh, I see. That's right. Yeah. Oh my god! We're exchanging vir- virtual photons. Yeah, right and that's now. like we're all connected to everyone in the world at the same time. Right. I wasn't planning on talking about this, but did this you know that I'm not me. touching the table right now? Actually, there's so like true. space in yeah. between them. Actually, if you hold your hand there long enough, there's a percent chance it just phases. That you'll phase right. right through. That's right. That's a question in Griffiths, by the way. It's like the, you have a you have a, a can on the table. No way. <laughs> and I shit you not, it's one of the questions, and it says like calculate the probability based on the De Broglie wavelength that oh the Lord. can will fall like through the table. Oh my lord. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So so tell me tell me what your reaction to to bullshit is. Cuz it is bullshit. <laughs> if you can't yeah, tell Yeah, I mean, it man, it's so hard to hard to come up with like what what you would say in, <laughs> in like Okay, a, okay, 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 okay. I'm going to be All right, yes, please. I I will be devil's advocate. All right, yes. Role play with me. So, um, there's these, uh, I, I, I actually read that, um, the entire world was created by electricity okay. and that's the only fundamental force of the universe. And there's these guys, these physicists, these, these plasma physicists who hold a conference and they still believe this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these are respected people. Okay. Uh, don't worry that all of their, uh, credentials have been removed by their universities, but that's fine. That's because they don't. Ivory Towers. And yeah, the uni- universities. They, they actually, actually. I think I'm just on the side of all other. Oh so. shit! I, I already <laughs> want them over. Uh, what about you? What about you? Do we, do I have you? Do I have you? Because uh, so if the world is created all by electricity. Yes, the moon's craters are all electricity. They're bolts of electricity. The thing I love about these kind of things is that like they could be just completely um what's the word for it like non adjacent conspiracy theories. But like because none of it makes sense, it just flows together beautifully. <laughs> because like, yeah. for example, oh, yeah. if the world's made out of electricity, it makes perfect sense that I get five G from my vaccines, and in that way, we're even more connected than ever. You're actually I so right. Still right right have now. to upload my dog with that five G, <laughs> so I can have a roaming. <laughs> so I can have that roaming five G. But uh, no, that's that's a genuine that's a genuine group of people. Yeah, I mean, so I I have had like a discussion with like some people that like truly believe that the Earth is flat. Right. Oh, and really? Yes, and where? like it from where? Uh, it was just like I was, I can't remember exactly where I was, but I was just like C-Sun. sat at like a bus stop. <laughs> no, not C-Sun. <laughs> so just an average Northridge resident. So <laughs> intense, just... so intensely rude. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, did, did you did you go to the like doghouse hot dogs with them, and you're like, all right, so you see how this is a cylinder? <laughs> you know too much about the area. I do I'm mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> doghouse is great. Go to doghouse. 
<laughs> you may you may well, find not a sponsored. Room. Not sponsored. Yeah, definitely not. Could be. No, Dog I don't. House. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry I'm, episode one. I'm already stamping out our pos- <laughs> any possibility of funding. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I yeah, can't remember exactly where it was. But I was like having a conversation with them, and I was coming up with like decent rebuttals to what they're saying, right? And it's just like it's just they're onto the next argument. They're onto the next yeah, thing, yeah, and yeah. they're just like this can't be right because it's so easy there. to just go keep going. But like, but what about? But yeah, about, exactly. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And not, never like answering any kind of what, like rebuttal what or anything about like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's hard to like combat that when somebody's like so deeply like entrenched in like something that they like believe but like haven't gone and like actually tested for themselves and yeah. like seen for themselves and and done stuff so it's you know you you are asking people to kind of give up a certain set of beliefs that they hold dear and near to their yeah. heart and that they've like kind of made part of their identity yeah so i and i sympathize to some degree mm-hmm. i i think my sympathy kind of drops off a cliff when it starts hurting people because mm-hmm. I, I have no, seen sure, these yeah. these same set of it's... gurus eventually like go into you know homeopathic healing or shit like that. Sure, yeah. um, and I'm not saying that like people that yeah. like are into pop science are all like this. Right? <laughs> no, like, no, no, there's no. Certainly varying degrees, sure right? Um, and like you know, for the most part, like if somebody says something wrong that they saw in a pop science thing that you know is like wrong at like some limit, but is like correct, you usually like belong. classically, it, it like you're matter. just like whatever. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. who cares? You know, like yeah, you're cool. You're interested in it, and like, you know, if they're interested in learning more, you can like say like, oh, but like, there's a caveat or something. The, the, but like, and, and you know, I, I, to stay away from politics at least for this pilot episode. Uh, like uh, the problem with a lot of these conspiracy theories is like, if you keep digging, it, it always ends up being some bullshit anti-Semitic stuff, which is the other like worrying part of it. Um, yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah, there's cer- there's certainly harm in. I like love that. conspiracy theories. I love watching that shit though. I I, I know way too it, many. It can so, be very so. W- one of my favorite. Sorry, one oh, last thing yes, about yes, pop yes. science. Yes. Um, and then uh, and then we can move on. Um, I will say like, um, it's still. I think it's like it sucks to that I have this sort of like gut reaction to like, you know, oh, but like, what's your source on that? And like, you know, what yeah. what cases are you talking about? Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, like, um. Also, like, independent of, like, that I think it's, like, an honorable thing to do to, like, attempt to, to communicate. But, like, at the end of the day, if it's inspiring more people to get into science, I think, like, it's, like, serving its function to uh, oh. a big asterisk. 100%. That, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. I agree. But that's also what we're talking about, right? As long as you're, like, you're good to first order, no one cares. It's yeah. just when, yeah. when yeah. things get off the rails a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So, I... Uh, do, have, have you... On conspiracy theories... It's like I can't help myself. Yeah, go do, ahead. Do, do, yeah. do you know who you know who Brett Brett Feinstein? I think it's Brett Feinstein. I have no idea. That weird sounds, guy who worked with familiar. Peter Thiel at one point. He he's this Don't weird. Know this person either. Doesn't matter. Weird guy, Brett something. Um he, he he's now working with this so he got discredited as a physicist and like he, he tried he usually troves he like goes around UCLA searching oh, for this like this is a guy. Yeah, yeah, this is a real guy. <laughs> he will go around. Sorry, I meant that as like he's like currently still alive. He's currently still alive. Like, he lives close to here, um, and and he will go around UCLA looking for the rogue, um, like theory grad student, and he'll ask to help him publish his work through their name because he's gotten discredited, and uh, he'll like pay you money to check his math and like help you write his papers. I'm pretty sure you're a little bit aware of this. No. You've not heard about this? No, I haven't, but I'm like, I'm only swelling because like, I'm down for a quick vote. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it, about? Well, the problem is your name will be attached. <laughs> well, no. Anyway. I mean, like, I'll, I'll be like, this is like totally nature.com and yeah, then like, yeah, have yeah. like a HTML. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll make it for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll work together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, regardless, this dude's kind of a nut job and he like made his money through Peter Thiel and like all those group of people. What and field he, is this? Physics. Like no, he, no. Oh, sorry. I mean, like, what subfield? Sub, oh, I have no idea. Oh, okay. It's like some niche theory of everything bullshit. Nice. Um, Good. Yeah. Low yeah, energy. Yeah. Physics. Need more of that. Yeah. So, but, mm-hmm. but, like, he's he's gotten no traction. So he's now decided that his new life's purpose is to do something called the Galileo Project because he believes that there's aliens right now, right here, and the government's hiding them. True. And he's working with this one like professor from one of these Ivy League schools. Who has tenure and they can't fire him. Oh, that's and awesome. like he is Good. convinced and like he's like, This is the planet they're from because of this and this signal. It's so sick. That guy, go burn in hell. Because he <laughs> he like 
he, he will try his that best. So far, he so will far, try so his bad. fucking best to come off as one of these science communicators, <laughs> one of these pop scientists, but just a conspiracy theorist. And like, he will slowly reel you in. And I have no, I know a couple of people who are like interested in physics, and they end up on his videos because he's on, on all of these self help podcasts. Oh man, that's so rough. Because like, <laughs> oh dude, the YouTube pipeline into yeah. things like that is yeah, so it's crazy. Insane. It goes so fast. So like, I was curious. I'm like, how fast can I get oh. here? So I looked up, you know, all these self-help gurus, and I just kept scrolling, and I no. hit the self-help guru, and then physicist, and eventually he oh, will come no, up. No, oh no! Um, oh man, that's so bad. Yeah, it's oh. so rough. That's like oh. incredibly <laughs> depressing. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, anyway, you can see him if you want to. If you want to ever visit him, you can just sit outside of like where the theorists are yeah, here. Yeah, I, th I think I'm good. And eventually he'll trove around. He'll appear <laughs> like a lost puppy. <laughs> One I'll of just, my friends. I'll stick to my place in the basement. One, one of my <laughs> friends, who's very near and dear to my heart, no mentions will be said. At one point, uh, didn't know that this is the guy, but he ended up like tutoring his kid. Um. Wow. No shot. Yeah, hundred percent shot. Uh, you know this person. Um, best TA in the universe. Uh, oh, I see. Didn't know. Didn't know. Uh, ended up like getting paid like three, four hundred dollars a session or something crazy. Wait, was his no kid, wait like, this is so funny because like if he's so like insane about it like you should be homeschooled by him right he is <laughs> homeschooled by him oh that's oh, man, that's, oh, that's oh, oh i was joking i was oh joking God, I, wait wait wait, wait i was job. i was i was so joking that's very <laughs> oh. he is indeed homeschooled and this is just extracurricular tutoring that he thought what is our useful. friend what is he well he's not working be? for him anymore he found out afterwards but like but like how long how long was he tutoring for yeah not sure okay but not not very oh, long. Man. I just Dude, I just that's know nuts. that's wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's how I know a lot of these other details. Uh, regardless, yeah, conspiracy theories in physics are are fucking sick. You should watch the flat Earth movie. It's fun. I like. I don't know. It's just like interesting because like I I don't know much about that. But it's just like the thing I said before about if you believe in one. The other ones just kind of like flow together, yeah. So and like good. I don't, I don't get it, because like if you're into that, then like the chance you also have, like I'm, I'm exaggerating here, but I think it slots in, like the comorbidity rate of that, <laughs> and also like, like, like that. Well, no, no, no. Let me finish. That in co like comboed with like you know the moon landing was fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. like uh -huh. you know like Area 51 shit and all these other things. That's where I got and, like, my alien waifu. That's right. You weren't there. Sponsored by Alienware. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but like for real, like I, it's actually nuts. So like I don't really know how to do, like what to do about this because like it's mm -hmm. obvious. I'm not saying it's like my job to mm -hmm. conquer misinformation, but it just seems so much easier to like misinform. You know, like yeah. I yeah. don't know why it's so much like easier off the pickup, and I'm just thinking about reasons why this is, and like I think the thing is like a lot of things that like we uncover. Uh, and the, the you know how uh, like i guess how how science uncovers things a lot of it is not intuitive and i think mm -hmm. like that sort of shock is like really exciting to me like oh i wouldn't have thought that at all and that's like awesome yeah but i think like that same sort of thing like kind of scares people too like oh like it shouldn't be that way so it won't be <laughs> yeah know? i get that i get I, I yeah and that, yeah. that is exactly the fun part that i like care so much about uh and, and i think it, it does come from this whole idea of like you you don't want to be surprised almost i find especially with a lot of these people who are and i've heard other arguments that just bother me a lot where they're like well you know um originally uh you know the guy who who, who thought that washing your hands as a doctor wasn't taken very seriously so all of these people are just visionaries and i'm like first of all that was in the like fucking 1800s yeah. Um. And and second of all, now we have peer review, and we actually care about these things. And, and like, science has moved on from like, you know, uh, the, it's it's horrific racist origins in like the 1940s of how it operated, and then and like we've we've changed. Things have changed significantly. Um. So like these nut jobs ultimately are nut jobs because they're 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 doing things. Also, you can you can see a lot of how these guys operate, right? Like what they care about and how they move. Um, where you know we're familiar with with our with with the PIs here and some of the professors here, and we are kind of familiar with how the science works. Like you, you publish, you 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 present, you have all of these colleagues. We have mm -hmm. like multiple grad students we all talk to. Whereas this guy, you know, runs around the department searching for a random grad student he can pay money to 
yeah. to publish on his behalf, mm-hmm. I'm not taking him seriously. Like, yeah. <laughs> or yeah, if you're on self help like, podcasts talking about your work, you're not a serious person. Yeah. Speaking of self help, though, um, what's his contact info? No reason. <laughs> <laughs> un- un- ironically, I can get it for you somehow. Please don't. Please don't. Also, all these episodes planned between an hour and an hour and a half, so we still have plenty of time. Yeah. Um, oh boy. We have so many more conspiracy theories I could talk about. What conspiracy, oh what flavor do you want? Oh, boy. I was going to move away from that. Ooh. That's fair. That's fair. Where are you going to move to? I was going to say not to keep us Is on. that he old? Is he old? Oh no, actually. That's, that's not a conspiracy. That's just a known fact, Dude, I you think. Fact. Oh Moving on. All right. Um, I think the... the uh, keeping it on science stuff is might be tiresome to the listener, but this is I feel like more for us for right now at least. And so like, um, like, so to like t- what I what I what I mean what I mean, what I mean like is like he's selfish. This is for us. Well, I finish my thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to totally keep it on science stuff, still, um, I actually one of my main topics I wanted to talk about with y'all is um, actually about. Like less about the science specifically, but also just like more on the mental of like being in the field person mm-hmm. uh, and talking to you guys specifically about like how you handle <laughs> like, I feel like un- un- ironically, I, I can get with, it for like, you somehow. Time, and it's really hard because also all these episodes um, planned between an hour and an I think hour it's and a half, combo so still of have like plenty of time. Uh, how I want people to perceive of me and also like, um, you know, basically all these other different conditions of what I grew up with, but it's it's like very important to me that I feel like people like on the outside I seem at least like a like a, a decently smart person to other people, whatever that means, right? Um, and it, it it feels very bad to me a lot of the time when I sort of expose that I like don't know a thing to people who uh I feel like I have to hold this facade up for, you know, and so like that's why I feel like for you guys I have a lot of questions. Uh, yeah. all the time because like I you know I'm comfortable right mm-hmm. but the moment I'm exposed like exposed I guess that I don't know something um, I feel like I don't take it very good and I uh, very well and I also think like but like th- it's just so weird to me because like that's a skill I feel like I need to and should have in the long run if I want to keep doing science right like the that's like the I feel like core part of research is like you know, you're tackling a thing that, like, you obviously shouldn't know everything about, mm-hmm. or it's like, mm-hmm. you know, why, why are you even attempting it? But, um, yeah, yeah, if you guys wanted to talk about like your own personal experiences, you can go uh, first. Yeah, I mean, I I feel very similar all the time. Um, you know, like the things that I don't know. I mean, like it's it's probably like especially true when I'm talking with you, right? Um, you know, like if if you ask me a question that like I just don't know the answer to, right? Um, you know, I. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to say like, I don't, I don't know for certain, like, you know, I'll, I'll try to explain to the degree that I know. Um, and like, you know, it, it never, it like rarely like feels good to like not have the answer. Right. <laughs> Especially, you know, like when you're kind of on the older end of, of things. Right. Um, so it's, you know, I, I don't think it's, you know, I, I, I think that it's, good to just be like upfront about where your kind of like knowledge gap ends right knowledge gap begins and ends um uh and like i feel like it's the the better way to get to whatever it is that you're trying to know um and it because like usually the person that you're talking to has like some inkling about what is going on and um like you can either like help fill in each other's gaps or like you will, will at least know like where you know where the question really lies um and like i i feel like some people like kind of exploit that in a way you know there's there's a lot of people that find like validation in like knowing more things than than the person that they're talking to and like yeah. they kind of can be real jerks about it right and like that is the the worst question is one that you know the answer to and are just waiting for someone to get wrong yeah exactly that happens when you a couple of times yeah Yeah. when when continue like when you ask if if somebody asks a question then they know the answer to it right and like they're they're just like seeing like what you know like that's a frustrating thing to to have happen and like you know i i don't think that 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 ever like ends in a way like i 
like there's always going to be somebody that has that like kind of like bone to pick and like they want to be the intellectual and they want to be that um but i think it, in general um like especially the people that like we're surrounded with um that isn't like an attitude that's really prevalent um at least i hope least that is also your experience um around around us and like, yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah i'd like like i said i think i'm really comfortable with just being vulnerable like what i consider vulnerable is you know just not knowing a thing and asking you guys but like mm-hmm. again i don't want it to be like a sort of pressure situation of like you know oh like i better i had better know what like they're gonna ask me like because yeah. like i i mostly ask you guys because like you know i it's a combo of like trusting like your knowledge uh and also just like um just like a time save in the sense of like oh if this is like a super like simple misconception i have here and you're just gonna like court like a quick course correct i'm down but like yeah. you know if you don't know off the top of your head i'm like okay I'll, like that's fine i'll look into it more you know yeah um to, to add to what patrick was saying so a, a lot of the imposter syndrome that that i face here uh is like this weird ability to perform things quickly in a weird way where like i, I can give you a perfect example like this the arctic box right where where the, like the new one came in and everything and uh i i saw the device this way don't worry about this is like technical jargon for a second but like device db basically has like all the list of devices that we care about i open it up it wasn't right and, and my immediate response was not uh, I am correct. They sent me the wrong the wrong I'm file. Wrong. I was like, I am wrong. I have no idea how this box works. I just wasted ten thousand dollars. I don't know how I'm gonna tell 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 Wes this thing and da 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 da. So my my brain rattled that off. And, and this also extends to other things where I always worry about like the the imbos- the imposter syndrome set, uh, you know sets in really. Uh, like I sometimes worry that like I am not good enough at posing the questions that i need to uh, i need to quite like actually pose to complete my phd like am i am i good enough to actually like figure something out uh Mm -hmm. is the one that that gets to me a lot of the time uh and the 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 thing that has helped me a lot is yeah basically just just asking you know you uh, you or patrick or 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 like you know like i'll I'll ask him like in group meeting i'll sometimes like ask him a dumb question yeah uh but oh, that's, th- that's the best way to like get through the Im- imposter syndrome for me i have found uh is is asking that that question that i perceive to be dumb uh because worst case scenario uh the person responds a- and is an asshole about it but then they're an asshole about it that's that's their fault yeah that's exactly. not my fault it's absolutely anymore. not on you um yeah. but like the imposter syndrome question is i i genuinely think that unfortunately it is not one um that can be easily like shoot oh, yeah, away yeah i i didn't know like i don't bring this up yeah. to like just you know here here on the pod we solve <laughs> oh no yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, think, <laughs> I think more <laughs> solve imposter i think i think l- less like solving i think i think the mindset of like you, you shouldn't go on trying to solve imposter syndrome i think it's just a a, a thing that you you end up it, it is incorporated into who you are when you're working in a field where you're looking mm-hmm. at things you have no idea what you're t- like what you have no idea that you're really working with because new and I yeah. think rather than like be scared of it, just go like, okay, why am I feeling this? Well, the reason I'm feeling this is because I feel frustrated that I can't solve the thing fast enough. But then kind of sit down for a second and go like, yeah, this is the f- the third box at UCLA that has this thing. Uh, maybe I don't have to solve this very quickly right now. Yeah, uh, and that's okay. Yeah. Uh, and you can ask yeah. your lab mates, and like if they know the answer very quickly, sick. Learn how they know the answer very quickly. Uh, but also know that you know your lab mates either have more experience in that specific thing that is you know brand new, um, or uh, and if, again I think this is another part that kind of uh, morphs into lab culture. If you're ever mm-hmm. going into grad school, lab culture is really important. I've told him and Deak. you I think and and Deak Thomas importance. multiple times that like the only reason yeah. I am here is because they're here. Uh, uh, don't don't go join a lab because of prestige. Join the cl- lab that you know you can work with because imposter syndrome is going to set in. Yeah. And if your lab mates aren't there for you or are those mm-hmm. group of people who will like put you down for not knowing something, your time yeah. will be miserable. Yeah. And, and I think You're, that's that's really it. Like you will have imposter syndrome. It won't go away. And it's the people yeah. around you who will like help you alleviate it. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Ha- having that. I mean, you know, like ha- having the ability to like talk to people that aren't gonna be absolute jerks. And like having a, a system where you know you can ask questions 
people like having the kind of like network of people that you can talk to either down the hall in your lab or even just like you know tech support people online mm -hmm. like just being able to like ask and like you know <coughs> have some kind of reassurance that there's not going to be some backlash is like really really helpful for that kind of stuff so. yeah 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 that's totally so, fair i feel like i definitely resonate with what you guys are saying also especially about like the um something going like not the way uh like you expect and then immediately oh, yeah. my first reaction mm -hmm. is like oh like where did i screw this up you know it could yeah. have been totally fine and like there oh, was yeah. like an external issue mm -hmm. uh and things like that but like as i've learned from being in the lab like it literally could be anything <laughs> yeah it could just it could be literally anything. be anything and like yeah keeping that open i think the the main thing i i guess like i bring this up is is mostly because like um there's gonna be like this is not the last like i'm not i haven't run into my last problem yet and so oh, like sure. you know with all of the things that come and you know are going to be in some sense like an obstacle but also like a more positive way of saying that it's just like a learning experience right uh, yeah. i feel like it's just something i'm just gonna state this i guess but like i i hope to reach like a point where i can like uh like not have such like catastrophic reactions to like uh like mistakes or, or like things i feel like i should have already known mm -hmm. uh, but yeah so i'm i'm just rolling with the punches for now as well and, yeah. and yeah that's that is just time, right? That that yeah, just I mean, comes through time purely. Yeah, I mean, like, unfortunately, I think the thing that probably will make like anybody more comfortable with that is just getting a catalog of mistakes. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Exposure. It's like you know, I I got a I got a big old catalog. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I distinctly remember when I was doing my ATC presentation, and then Wes was just grilling me about yeah. that one thing, and Michael For genuinely sure. thought that like <laughs> I'd failed, <Yeah. laughs> and it was just like, like nah, that's just that's just what he does, uh, but. but it's it's weird. Yeah. It's it's just the thing that you have. Yeah, it just it genuinely is a catalog of mistakes, and then, and and being in the environment where your imposter syndrome is not, you know, attacked, but rather going like, hey, you're fine. This is what's happening. You're just having a bad time right now because of mm -hmm. X Y Z. We'll figure it out. Life will go on. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, and that's that's. I genuinely think like that is a lab culture thing, and you should. It's one of the things that you should very much focus on thinking about. Um, with people who you're working with. Yeah. 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 And like you know, I'm super thankful to have landed here specifically. Uh, yeah, it's it's been a good time. I feel like I've learned a lot, and like uh, I think this is also just like a combo of luck and just uh, also just like uh, I don't know, surprise. I feel a lot of surprise because I came you know here uh, without ever thinking about AMO physics at all, period, yeah, same. or like same, you yeah. know being like, oh, I'm definitely coming yeah. in, and I'm gonna be like. I'm going to I'm going to be him. I'm that guy. I'm that like high energy physicist and like <laughs> yeah, I'm going to like, you know, out theorize oh, yeah. all of them. You can still be. Oh, no. In, in our hearts. Respectfully? Respect <laughs> Look at me in the eyes and tell me I'm that I'm that theorist. Find that fifth force baby. I can't. No. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that. That's what I'm saying. No, I'm I'm not him and that's okay. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Oh man. Sorry to to bring it on so heavy. No, no, no. You're no, good. It's perfect. Uh, that's, that's great. Yeah, it's a great topic. It's great. Yeah. Great. Right? Yeah. I do have a connecting topic. You to do. Oh, yeah. In like a kind of sort of way. Tell me. Yeah. If you if you guys wanted to like go for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I feel like this part of me is like uh like this sort of facade part of like wanting to like make sure that like you know people think I'm like the shit. I feel like this is kind of sort of connected to like. The fact that I am, I feel like I, I try my best to not give that vibe, and I don't really try to put these standards on other people. But I, at heart, I know I'm like a competitive person. Mm -hmm. Right on. And I think like I just it like the the thing that's kind of bullshit though is like I do this thing where it's like kind of um, it's like kind of conceited actually, be because what I'm saying is like. I hold myself to like a different standard than I would like another person. And so that's kind of sort of implicitly saying like I am him actually and I should be able to hit those those standards. Mm -hmm. uh, but like not for not for anyone else though. Like I think it's like anyway. I that's that's a totally different thing I wanted to unpack. But the point I'm I'm getting to is like I am a competitive person mm -hmm. and I for my hobbies I tend to get into them and then I want to be kind of sort of competitive about like 
a lot of them including and this is this does not start or end at gaming specifically mm -hmm. so i do kind of yes. want to talk about um like competitive games we're into and like um, yeah this this is this is a this is a good topic yeah, yeah, you yeah, can, yeah. I, I i am the king of hot takes here okay, um, okay. and like allowing you to to like i guess get into the the heat of this i'm going to ask you first then which is like um in your in your opinion what is like the funnest uh what sorry sorry no, no let's not do fun that's that's too that's too easy um what is the best competitive game oh boy period Ooh. Let, let me buckle up real quick. Okay. Ooh, the best competitive game. Yeah, and you can argue this through just like raw game mechanics, yeah, or like watchability, yeah. or like, you know, you can come at this from any yeah. angle, but in your opinion. So, I actually have a lot of feelings, and, and as much as this might be the, the default answer, I genuinely think that the best competitive game oh boy. Pause. is... Pause. I know, I know. Hold. Okay. Go. Three, two, one. We say at the same time. Okay. Three, two, two one. one. Animal Crossing. Strike. Really? I totally thought you were going to say melee. What did you say? Animal Crossing. Animal Cross. I mean, that is competitive. Dude, so, okay. Honestly, <laughs> if you see, I... dude, day day dot with all of the um with on New Horizons, all of the girlies getting five star islands. It's on true. Day it's kind of fucking oh, crazy. It's actually. It's actually they they all have to. Actually, what we have to do is. Okay. We got to make them delete all of their accounts and then force them to get five stars as fast as possible. Okay, but skipping over the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the New Horizons. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. So, a so New Horizons <laughs> we'll get back to later. Um, New Horizons speedrun soon. Uh, but what ends up happening... So I, I have... So Melee is... I don't... I love Melee. And I think Melee, purely based off of uh, skill, is the most competitive game. But I don't think that's what makes a good competitive game. If it's purely based off of skill, then like, you know hell chess could be com considered the most competitive also and in like a lot of rooms what i think is really good is um how how quickly can you convey that someone is a good player uh to a to a brand new person so mainly you can go like well you know they're very fast but i would argue that if you watch like zane and mango play uh, you, you an average person has no idea who's better on like any given moment or like who won what trade where and why i would argue people aren't aren't really paying like people can't an average person can't tell that very quickly counter strike is very different it's very simple right like you kind of know what a smoke is i don't have to explain to you how like smokes obscure things uh i don't have to explain to you like that getting a headshot is impressive um and like the movement of counter strike is really fucking slow uh like on average it's really slow so like the the plays that do happen um and the rounds are really short too so like you've got like play after play after play after play that's happening like really really quickly if it's like a 1v5 uh the it's very easy for you to tell like oh this guy's cracked because he like he took on five people at the same time there's all of these things happening um so i think like counter-strike has it all counter-strike has the twitch reflexes that melee has Counter-Strike has the very easy readability that is, like, really required. And then Counter-Strike also has the, like, meta play of, like, figuring out when you have to buy things. Why do you have to buy things? Who does what role? I think it's really cool. To be the little devil on your shoulder. Yeah. To your devil's advocate. Really. Yeah. Um, this, I feel like this is rather charitable of a take coming from you. Just in the sense that, um, I, I mean that specifically because, like, um, I feel like you famously to famously in the sense that like me and Patrick know this, which yeah. is like, uh, you don't care about casuals. I don't That's care right. about and casuals. And so like starting stating your point on the in best fact, competitive game based off of what casuals can uh, see right off the bat, that seems mm -hmm. a little. Yeah. In fact, I think even today you said that um all <laughs> casual players should be melted. <laughs> I, I did. Say oh that. really? I I I I, How did I, 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 know, I said casual players' opinions should be melted. Um, oh, okay. But 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 so. So the reason why I, I still stand on Counter-Strike and I think that like the, the viewing experience is important in some degree um, is that viewing experience is what ends up giving you and your competitive scene like a lot of money. Uh, and I think that's, that is a very important aspect of it all. And I think Counter-Strike doesn't skimp on its competitiveness while still being a very entertaining game to watch. Um, whereas like a lot of other competitive games which have done certain things that I very dis I very much disagree with, and I and I will stand on it. Um, have done it because of like really dumb decisions off of like Reddit bullshit. 
uh, and, and that's not because of the viewing experience or anything, but like I, I genuinely think Counter Strike has the pro scene that is equivalent to Melee, uh, but then also it has a viewer experience that is better than Melee because of like the game is just more readable. Mm -hmm. um, but if you if you put me in a vacuum and you're just like no, nah, uh, you're asking me to go like if let's say tomorrow esports isn't a thing anymore, right? Uh, we're we're back 2000 early 2002 tournaments are just springing up. Um, you know, Counter Strike hasn't gotten. Well, Counter Strike was already big, but like hasn't gotten to the point where like it's huge in viewer experience. And you'd ask me the same question, I would say melee. Uh, I think I think it's just because of like Counter Strike has proven to be the most successful esport, like to date. They still have multi million dollar prize pools. They still sell out. Uh, like I think they're still bigger than League, which is fucking crazy. Um, and like they've done yeah, it. League's since... on the downtrend, I think. Is it on the downtrend? Uh, That's... kind of, sorta. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think I kind of agree with you in the sense of like, even though I was just, I I just thought it was funny to. No, it, it is it is fair, like, because because you do bring up something fair, but I I think I think that is more me going like, how should you build your game versus yeah, like, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. I think that's the point I was going to, which is basically like I think a good competitive game should have um should have a low like I guess low skill floor and also. I think the really cool thing is to having that high skill yes. ceiling as well mm -hmm. yeah. to sort of exemplify the sheer like difference that like your pro yeah. players in the scene have. And I love melee. If you want to get good at melee, you have to play for like five years. If you start yeah. right now, yeah. you won't get yeah. good enough. Yeah, and I mean like you know just just you know kind of like hammering home on this kind of like viewer watchability, right? You know like for you know a, a game that is very competitive and very skill based, like PvP and World of Warcraft, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you try to watch an arena match, it's right, fucking awful. It's horrendous. <laughs> Dude, you know, I've played and I don't know what the hell goes. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> there's there's too much going on. Like you know, the the best people have to have like sound cues, different sound cues of different abilities going off, and you know, like yeah, you know, an average is just so bad. Yeah, an average viewer is just has no shot. A, a new viewer to the game has no ability to understand what is going on. Yeah, and I think. Um, Age of Empires, which is another game I really enjoy, has like a weird double-edged sword in that too, where I think if you it has like this, it has a very similar like problem where the game is very fun to watch. If you mm -hmm. watch professional players do that, it's like they're fucking machines. Like they'll be pumping out things perfectly. They have like this insane memory of like where ever, how to like you know put their builds correctly and all that stuff. But then you try to play like them, and I think your fingers break a little bit. It's sure. kind of insane, yeah. and, and and I think like that is why the Age of Empires community is is kind of small, mm -hmm. but it's nice. Like everybody knows everybody, but like it is it is fairly small because kind of like melee, the getting into it is kind of annoying. Like I wouldn't have gotten into it unless I only got into it because one of my friends is like a full time streamer for it, mm -hmm. and he asked me to play, mm -hmm. uh, and I got really into it again. But yeah, along those lines, I think best competitive game, CS:GO. Mm -hmm. It's free. It is a game that's been yeah, around for big. so goddamn long. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, it uses no magic, none of that. It's just you got your gun, you got a grenade, you got a smoke and a Molotov and a fucking dream. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I, I wanted to touch on that point, but basically, like, this is like less about, I guess, best competitive game. Like the point I'm about to make is less about best competitive game, but just like something I appreciate about like good design, just in general, is like. Like, it's it like the more impressive it is to me really comes from like how much like mileage you get out of like a really simple idea, mm -hmm. and, right? And like your yeah. point to like okay, you're a guy with a gun. Yeah, they're also yeah. guys with a gun. And like if we had to chessify this a little bit, like they all have the same pieces as you. It's simply mm -hmm. just like a matter of like positioning and timing of all, like all of these things. And so like yeah. the raw simplicity allows for like all of these like different complex layers to come in if you care to like if you so choose to like engage in that way. And I do agree that like that's like the best part about it, like gaming. In and that's another thing with Counter Strike that's kind of that's kind of wild. Uh, also, I'm gonna come over a little oh, bit. Yeah, sure. Worry. Uh, and, and another thing that's kind of wild on on the Counter Strike front is the fact that like on paper the game sounds boring shit. You've got three minutes to plant a bomb. Your movement speed is dog water, uh, and, and like you, you've you've got guns where um, you know they they do very little damage on certain spots of the body and all these things. But like on paper, the game the game doesn't sound that interesting. 
and then you play and you're like oh my god this like rotation speeds these people how are they so fast how do all these things and like the game is so goddamn intense uh mm -hmm. that uh it's it just it's just really hard to it's really hard to describe how well counter-strike does its thing mm -hmm. and i think that's why it sucked away my life for so long um also yeah, I mean, so, something that probably helps is, is just kind of like the speed of a round. Mm -hmm. right? It's so I mean, short. Like you, you can just like, you know, toss away <laughs> what you just did and just be like, okay, I'll just go again. And, and like it's the just moments, a few minutes, right? It's just, yeah, it's okay. the esport yeah. moments of Counter Strike are legendary. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Tarek winning uh, the, the the nationals was wild. I still remember that. Uh, or like uh, I remember the 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 boost on Overpass, like it was yesterday, where they did a three man stack boost. A guy had a scout, and you could like over the wall watch his sight and the enemy spawn, and he headshot at them. And like the entire crowd at uh, like in 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 Poland freaking out that like these guys did it, and like mm -hmm. they kept they broke they kept a broken glitch in the game secret through all of their scrims through all of the game <laughs> until one match that like was so important they're like okay now it's time to pull it out like all of those moments they're just legendary i don't know counter strike is is, is such a legendary game for sure yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good answer i don't know if you also want yeah to what about you what, what is I, your competitive game it's okay if you don't i i, I kind of don't i mean like i i just kind of you know because i'm so like just kind of in world of warcraft right i Oof. just I just like watching <laughs> the best people that play the, the game that I play. Play what's the game. what's the favorite format you like to watch? Uh, it's it's just the race to world. First. Hell yeah, race to It's world just first. Who Europe is the kill. best. Okay, <laughs> only for now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this yeah, is this... an American citizen who just voted today. But... <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. We actually walked him. They to walked the me box, to the yes. box, yeah. and I, and as I put it in, I noticed that my German citizenship has further faded into the distance you know I, I think i said this to you guys but like this is the first this is the second election i've ever voted in yeah yeah i i have never the lived uh, the one that was previous to this the yeah i think it was the midterms midterms yeah i think it was the midterm yeah midterm because like i I've, I've never lived in the country that i was a citizen of until like now mm -hmm. yeah based Con congrats based. yeah yeah it took a cool. long ass time that's a, that's a story for a different pod episode when we actually know everything is working <laughs> 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 that's true that's true yeah this is where we I find out that he never pressed to come play. back and i'm just like no i checked i went up and checked twice because i'm so so nervous uh i don't care how bad this episode is i'm having a great a fucking legs. time it'll yeah, be fun just yeah, yeah 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 um but yeah I, I don't know competitive games are, are are yeah near and dear to my heart too i am massive fan like all uh i I tend to say that I'm quote unquote not a competitive person, but I don't think that's very true. Uh, because when do you say this? I, yeah, I, don't think I never believe this. that. What the hell? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> as 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 you two know, my one of my f most famous lines is, "You'll never be conk." Um, <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> you'll never be conk with that fucking mindset. Um, but but no, I I think. I think when I say I'm not a competitive person, I think my my better way of saying that is I think competitive sometimes gets a really bad rap, where people think you're you're a dick, like to your teammates and other things, mm -hmm. uh, and I and I don't think that's a competitive person. I think a competitive person very much knows that if you're if you're a piece of shit to your teammates, yeah, uh, you're not gonna yeah. you're not gonna get very far. Agreed. Um, I'm competitive with myself more than anything yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. Like I think that's a healthy thing. Yeah, yeah. Have, yeah. To some um, degree. To some degree, yeah. yeah. There's there's limits. There's course. limits. Yeah, there's limits to everything. Um, in that sense. But yeah, I I because I really hate when whenever I get when I'm like playing with my friends or or doing anything, uh, that's in this regime of things. Uh, and and then people start going like, oh, actually, like we're playing against a bad team. Um, and like we only lost because you know we did X. Yeah, but, like you lost. Yeah. Like that's it. Like we yeah. you just lost. Figure out what you did wrong. Yeah. And then move on. No, I agree. Um, I think 100%. I totally agree. And I think yeah. I wish more people could just like view like if they wanted to be competitive about a game, they could like view it that way. Mm -hmm. But I think unfortunately, a lot of people um just refuse to budge from the position that like oh I was like it was I who made the mistake, you yeah, know, yeah. or like it was my fault. Yeah, but, some <laughs> but I think like people that can admit that, right, and have like the growth mindset, go back, hell yeah, and like see their mistakes and learn from them, mm -hmm. try it better the next time. Like that, that is like a really good yeah, positive to, skill to have. To be a little bit more like to be a little like social engineering for a second, like 
if you like pragmatically speaking if you're playing like a team game Mm -hmm. right and like your teammate fucks up causing you to lose or like you know delay or whatever Mm -hmm. like it is like strictly speaking suboptimal to flame them right because like for sure you're wasting yeah. your own time oh yeah you're also dealing psychic damage to them and yes. you're probably also dealing psychic dam- damage to yourself yes. for how yeah. tilted you are so like really like holding it together and just being a well-adjusted person i know it's hard for gamers but, it's like, hard but, they're like, the most impressive like, or the most impressed might actually be optimal just saying yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like being a nice person turns out to be the the optimal play that that's crazy yeah. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, I just just that is one of the the one of the very big things that uh I don't know, it's it's interesting. That's also why I like 1v1 games so much. Mm. Like I love Age of Empires, it's a 1v1 thing. I I I do like Counter-Strike obviously. I play a lot of it. Um but like the reason why I like, I I've, I've always been in love with Melee and I've always been in love with 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 um with like Age of M- Age of Empires like RTS type games. Uh, and then even like Magic the Gathering it's it's just you like you're the only person you can flame uh and you got to figure that shit out and um yeah. that's I, I i will not rant about magic the gathering today i'm saying yeah, this not right yet. now Pod not two. not today Pod two, yeah. um i i went to magic con chicago and i have feelings uh but i will not rant about ma- magic today uh i'm moving on from this topic uh, i feel us sliding down the slope yeah. right yes now, yes man. yes yes i'm pushing out i can't so, wait till we get there so yeah. sliding directly into a different topic hell yeah that is nothing related to to physics or or video games well i don't think Boy. yeah wait i don't the venn diagram of me doesn't like yeah i don't have any expertise outside of those outside two things of that, but <laughs> i want to get into japanese denim denim you're gonna have to explain quite a bit. What do you yes, mean? yes. So, so, so. There's these. I I wear jeans a lot. Um, like I never some heard people of them. would argue that I have a fucking uniform. Not today, but uh, but but generally speaking, I will have like a jeans and some random fucking shirt on or whatever. And and, and fashion is my passion. Uh, That's pa- right. And I would like fashion to be my passion. Uh, so I've made it one of my New Year's resolution that every month I will buy myself a nice piece of clothing. Oh boy. Yeah. And this this month you have decided on Japanese denim. So if I were to do that, then I would knock uh, knock out maybe more than just a month worth of. Uh... It's just stopped. No, there it is. Um, yeah. So 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 basically, I would knock out more than just a month uh, worth of worth of the budget that I usually put aside. I see. Because they're kind of expensive. Yeah. So so let, let me let me let me let me let me let me hone you guys in on what this is. So you know how how American denim kind of was invented in like the early like seventies, like the 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 proper denim. Well, it was in the eighteen hundreds. But like sure. but like the good denim was like the nineteen fifties through seventies. Okay. Like those were god tier denim times. Which mm-hmm. you can notice is right after World War Two, so but Americans. The, I see, but then Nihon denim is folded. N- 1, Nihon denim pounds. is better, uh, <laughs> because it's from it's from 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 Japan. No, uh, so what ended up happening is that the United States uh, upgraded its looms to bigger ones, and that's what those jeans are that you're wearing right now are made out of. They're from like a different type of loom. Big loom. So head. all of these old looms were eventually sold to Japan. Okay. And they still use those looms. Um, and they also use a different kind of like fabric. So what ended up happening is that these craftsmen like revive this old American like jeans type thing. The only so Japanese is, denim is old American denim. Technically, it's very similar oh. to old American. I think they've mm. changed a lot of it, but like the looms and all that stuff still was like an old American trend. Also, like a lot of these like old pants were left over in Japan after soldiers left. They just didn't want them to take them with them, so they just threw them away, and then they got reused. So it's called salvaged le- denim, um, okay. but they're apparently like super duper durable. Like a lot of workers will wear them there, and they're like really nice, and they look really well fitted, and they have really nice color. And I, I really want one because I wear jeans a lot, especially to work and stuff. Sure, yeah. Uh, I would just be dropping like a hundred to two hundred dollars on them. I mean, that's like that's like honestly speaking, that's like not terrible for pants. Yeah, yeah. It's like at the most like two x a pair of American jeans. Exactly. Like, and I always you know. have two pairs of American jeans anyway. So I'm like, I've, if one of these is better than two, then I feel like I can justify this purchase. But yes, I, I, I one of my New Year's resolutions is to try and get better clothes. So now, can you verify? I'm gonna verify that the jeans that you may purchase have been like, actually made 
on one of these like old American looms? So I or think, are they like just I, I'm, new looms that are modeled off of these old looms? So I, I believe that if you want one from the actual old American looms, you have to mm-hmm. go to Japan. You have to go to Osaka. I see. And then you're dropping like five to seven hundred dollars. Okay, that's that's quite a bit um, more. Yeah. But if you want one on like reconstructed looms, and I believe that there's some companies in America who will even do that. Uh, but they still have like the Japanese process. They use the Japanese fabrics and all that. That's when the price drops a little bit. I see. I so see. I wanted to test one out on from like an American brand before I try out the. Uh... Now is this New Year's resolution? Does this apply to like new clothing of like every like to? Uh, I I I guess like does it have to be a different like slot of clothing? Like could you have a whole New Year's set? By the end of the year, yeah, I yeah. think I think that's basically what I'm doing. I bought oh shoes. Oh my gosh! I, I bought I bought like a, what did I buy in January? I can't remember what I bought on January. Oh 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 oh! I I bought my really nice um, union made sweater, the black oh, one. Yeah that's, yeah, that's a good good sweater. I I like that one. And then I bought some mm-hmm. some like very fun shoes uh last month, uh and okay we're we're still fine. Yeah we have like. A few more minutes left anyways um and then i i bought some nice shoes mm-hmm. last month so this month i'm looking at like pants and and, and i'm leaning towards these japanese denim pants but I, I i wanted to hear your guys intake if you're like nah this sounds like a fucking scam oh I mean, like about japanese denim specifically yes yeah, so or if you're like if you're like listen these are jeans yeah, there's better things you can think about buying uh i'm kind of curious to hear your input like what I don't know. I mean, like, I, I, I find jeans to be a very versatile and, like, valuable kind of pant that you can have, right? You know, um, especially given the fact that you aren't, like, a shorts guy, mm-hmm. right? I, no, I, I, I don't need shorts. I don't necessarily see any value in you investing in shorts. Um, I've never seen your knees, I've, I don't wear shorts. And what? I've never seen your knees, and I don't think I ever yeah. will. No, I hate shorts. They make <laughs> yeah. me feel naked. <laughs> yeah. Make me feel naked. So, so given the fact that you aren't a shorts guy, right? Mm-hmm. I kind of see jeans as like the best like catch all kind yeah. of like option you can have for pants. Like if, if we're talking about like daily wear, if you're talking about like, you know, like I want some like fancy, like nice kind of like dress up pants, then obviously maybe jeans yeah. aren't necessarily the way to go. But like sometimes dress up jeans can be pretty sick. Too. I feel like I'm leaning into my, into my, my weebness. Yeah. You're going to make fun of me. I mean, you guys better fucking of make fun of me. Of course I'm going to make fun of you. But like, I it's mostly going to come from a place of like of love. It, it no. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Couldn't be that. <laughs> no. A place of like wow, it really cost that. It cost that type, much. Type wow. of thing. I think like Money I, I just like trust your your sense of style and like taste to get something that looks good. But mm-hmm. I will say something that really does it for for me. Like I you know, I don't really wear I mean, I have a couple pairs of jeans. Um but I will say like th- this is kind of hard to ask because um you can't try them on there but yeah uh for thrifting though i think thrifting is like a really good way to like not only like get things for cheap but like because the uh selection is like so variable and kind of unexpected like it kind of like by default forces you to kind of sort of try newer Mm -hmm. things right Mm -hmm. and so like i feel like you could probably find some really interesting like gene angles that could work for you because like i feel like you have like a taller thinner frame so like sticking with like skinny like close fit jeans is like a really solid look but i wonder like if you tried to like go with like baggier or like you know like a wider fit instead of like a taper like, okay well like yeah. w- how that would work for you, you yeah know? i'm super down to try that's why i said this is this this year i'm trying to like buy things that are you know nice and new and yeah, cool yeah yeah so that's i'm awesome. super down i've never thrifted really oh it definitely oh man absolutely Wait, we should do go it. sometime yeah wait this is a, this could actually be a really really fun experience yeah i've yeah. never thrifted i'm super down um i wanted to like last weekend but then things got up yeah it came up because this was again i, was, I will say never. though even though i bring this up yeah um generally speaking like i wouldn't recommend this and i've not really i i technically have done this with this pair of pants actually but normally i don't recommend thrifting pants because like you you got like that's the thing you probably should try on like with oversized or undersized mm-hmm. shirts you could probably do something yeah. like a really yeah. good guesstimation of um but like i don't know i think like going out and seeing like what is out there um it's 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 a lot of luck of the draw i have mm-hmm. to say because like mm-hmm. you know 
they might just simply not have the things you're looking for, but some days like it's there and also it's cheap and then you know plus L plus ratio, you know? It's it's a it's a good time out there. Um yeah, I would recommend like if we wanted to make it a whole like day out of this, uh you could go to like Melrose. And like we have, like, Ooh, I, that is yeah. that is a thing that cool. I wanted to do. I want to go to the trading post so bad. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. Been the, here that whole for... street is like a gigantic. Have you been? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've been. Oh, uh, and also, like, I um, complained to you. Remember? I've I know. Been yeah, here it was, for, like, it was just like last years, week. Yeah, and I've wanted to go for eight years. Really? Oh my gosh! I've never well, gotten a chance. I mean, okay, uh, I'll. You know what? I'm I'm down to make this happen. We'll make it work. <laughs> On top of all of this, is like not just the street is like composed of a bunch of like thrift shops. But the biggest, like, selling point is that the Fairfax High School um, mm-hmm. that's, like, in the area, uh, every Sunday, it c- transforms into a big sort of thrift, like, maze. Yeah, I, oh, I've wow. heard this. This, this yeah. is where I want to go to. and I've never gotten a chance to yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm like, very down. The, they, like, not only have their thing stuff, but, like, they have a lot of, like, um, like, homemade items. And so, like, I have some, like, cups and stuff that, like, people made themselves. And, like, you know, obviously, it costs a pretty fucking money because... But it's you know, fun sure. and cool. But it's, yeah, and exactly, nice. exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I think that's awesome. I think successful. Successful pilot. Successful first, first yeah. attempt at this. Yeah, it's so. yeah, brother. Thank you I so much. We have, mix for, we have, like, mix a, we have sound clips. I will, I will have to obviously figure out how to edit and all that stuff. But thank you so I much wish. for being here. Um, hopefully, we get better as we go on. If we stay at the same level, then that is impressive in a different way. Uh, <laughs> uh but never but underestimate no, no. we'll keep going um posting schedule all that stuff will be done later don't worry about that right now uh this has been uh from the basement or 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 the basement uh or whatever fucking working name title, we'll come up title. with yeah. uh we'll, we'll, i mean you'll see it at the bottom right there uh at some point goodbye everybody goodbye Bye-bye.